So this section is about fixing common problems. I want to cover a few different implementation issues that we see commonly uh, when AdWords and analytics are linked. And whilst you might not be technical, it's good practice to have a handle on why the, these things happen. So if they do crop up in the future, um, or if they're there currently, you know how to spot them and, and how to deal with them. So let's make sure everything is silky smooth. So we're still in the acquisition AdWords campaigns report here. You should see in your account an aggregate of clicks and sessions. And in this example, here we can see that the top campaign has um, clicks and sessions that don't match. Now the general rule of thumb for clicks and sessions is that you should see around a 90% accuracy rate. And the reason being is a click is not a session. It's possible to have a user uh, or a website visitor click on your ad and leave the website before analytics loads, for example. It's also possible for users to be visiting multiple times from the same advert. And of course, technology isn't perfect. People browse in private. Um, they kill off their cookies and generally wreak a bit of havoc along the way. So the fact is, the vast majority of session data should be okay. Hence, 90% accuracy is typical rule of thumb. It can be higher. In this example, we can see that the clicks and sessions data are wildly def uh, different. So let's investigate that. Let's start looking at the uh, Glissid or GCL ID. Now, by default, Google AdWords has a setting called auto tagging that the vast majority of people will be using and it should be enabled automatically and by default. You'll see this in action if you click an advert, the GCL ID is dynamically generated. It's a globally unique tracking parameter. So a Google click identifier, a Glissid, GCL ID, however you may say it. And this is used to pass um, information between AdWords and analytics. So it's, it's pretty important that it works. So I've done a search for corduroy trousers, and why wouldn't I? Here's a live example of the uh, GCL ID in action. Now, please, I don't advocate you click on other people's adverts. I actually bought from this store earlier, um, so I feel it's, it's kind of acceptable that I've used them as a, an example. But yeah, please don't click your competitors. Now we've seen that in the wild. More importantly, how to test this on your own website and without getting too technical also. So let's append your URL, your uh, website address. Now this could be your, your top level domain, so your .com, your .co.uk, whatever it may be, um, or it could be a, a specific page on your website. And let's include a, a test parameter. I'm gonna use a question mark, uh, GCLID equals tester hyphen one, two, three like so. Hit enter, load the page, and your tracking code should remain intact. Now notice how the capitalization is preserved too, because uh, GCL IDs are case sensitive, and that's really important. So no switching, no changes, no truncating. Uh, the max characters, if you want to be technical, is 100 uh, characters long, and certainly not being removed or redirected by your website. So that code must remain intact. If any of those things happen, there's your issue. And if you're not a web guy or gal, then speak to your uh, website developer and have them investigate the problem. This is the most common implementation issue. However, if that works for you, uh, then let's look at a few other potential issues that could be causing your click and session data to go askew. And of course, if it's skewing your session data, it's also uh, skewing all your other data off the back of that. So there are a few silly things that we've all made mistakes doing in the past, and we might even have in place now, particularly when we've got large websites. So things like missing your tracking code on certain pages, less of a problem for modern day uh, CMSs and, and e-commerce platforms because they use a template based system. Another very common issue is actually having the, the tracking code added to the site twice or worse, <laughs> three times. Again, this is something to talk to your developer about, but you can add it, for example, if you're running an e-commerce store on Magento or Shopify, so on and so forth, you can actually add your code in on the back end, but the person building your website might add it into the code itself and these issues arise. 
Another common thing is for your tracking code not to fire, and this could be a conflict with an, another snippet of code on your website. And now that is a more technical situation that you need um, a developer to debug for you. And a redirect on the page, the landing page, prevents analytics from executing, from loading. So the page loads so quick that it doesn't trigger uh, the analytics code. And also using both the manual and auto tagging creates serious discrepancies. So as I said before, most people use uh, auto tagging, but if typically bigger businesses may have a an internal uh, tracking process for their campaigns or a third party analytics application. And that's why they'll use manual tagging. Again, avoiding being technical, let's use a quick way to assess uh, these problems using the Google Tag Assistant, which is a Chrome browser extension. Let me quickly show you. It's free and you can grab it uh, at this link. So here's our website. And if I click the little assistant icon, you will see a color coded status. So the green smiley face equates to all things working. Um, but otherwise, you'll be presented with some color coded issues in here, which are descriptive enough to tell you what's wrong. and more than enough to send you or to send to your web developer to get fixed. So it won't tell you if you've got duplicate code, you have to use your eyeballs, but it will be bloody obvious because it will list them in here. Now, the dreaded not set, not to be confused with uh, not set, not provided in organic search. This is not set data within analytics itself. So. Let's look at this for the, the sessions within uh, that we've seen within this account that's got not set next to them, which is another problem to deal with. So if you see a, a not set, that means that there's an AdWords account somewhere that's not linked to your company. It could be from an old supplier, uh, an old website you've recently had, a, a refresh, uh, or it could just be the wrong AdWords account is linked to your analytics profile. Unfortunately, it's a case of retracing your steps over time and literally asking people to check their side, you know, getting your development team or whoever built your website to, to double check, especially if you're working with a, a company with many departments and sections in it. Now, if you're absolutely sure that it's none of the above, then take a look at your invalid clicks report in AdWords. Essentially, uh, the spam bots and the click bots that Google is filtering out and refunding, refunding you for are getting passed through to analytics and reported, but they're actually removed from AdWords. Now, if you're seeing that on a, a big scale in the many thousands, uh, that's a deeper problem. And it typically happens on much larger spending accounts. And I'm hoping that if that's you, then you've got someone that's, be, you know, you've got a resource available, a developer, a server host who can block certain IPs for you and bots on the server side before they even hit analytics. There are, there are also many tools out there that can do this for you uh, that cost anywhere from sort of $50 a month up to, you know, many thousands. If all else fails, hit the little exclamation mark in the top of your uh, Google Analytics dashboard and you'll be presented with information that shows you irregular issues and critical issues. Hopefully, with all that said and done, even if you don't have any analytics reporting problems today, you'll know where to look if problems may arise in the future.